Wouldn't it be great if schools offered a class in connecting socially? Well, they don't, and the ramifications can be troublesome. Let's have ourselves a pocket-sized pep talk, and I'll tell you one of the most critical lessons of all. A pocket-sized pep talk, the podcast that can help energize your business and your life with a quick, inspiring message. Now, here's your host, Rob Jealous. I've never been a fan of reality shows, or as I call them, bad actors acting badly. But oddly enough, I've always been a fan of the first one ever produced. Although some seasons are better than others, my allegiance has never wavered. I'm talking about the social experiment that's called Survivor. The lessons are endless, but for the sake of this podcast, let's just focus on one for now. I want to talk about alliances. And I want to make sure you're aware of three critical lessons. Number one, there's no avoiding it. Many people think when they work with others, it's not necessary to be in an alliance. Makes me laugh when I think back to season one of Survivor. There was an outrage when a few of the participants formed an alliance. Gasp. Coincidentally, of the 16 participants who began this social experiment, The three individuals that formed the alliance were the final three standing. The person who put the alliance together won the million dollars. Watch Survivor and you'll notice how fast these alliances are formed, much like the alliances that are formed with the people you work with. Not referring to a clique, but a true alliance. There's a difference. A clique is an exclusive club that's often brazen in its inclusion or exclusion of others while an alliance is more, well, subtle. Are there alliances where you work? You bet. It would be easy to say, I don't need to be in an alliance. I say you're not only wrong, but by avoiding an alliance, you're running the risk of sending out dangerous signals to others. Watch Survivor, and you'll see that during season one and two, subjects strategically avoid alliance. They often do it for some noble cause, but the reality is they're the first to be removed. They're seen as being aloof and not team players. You are naive if you think that you are above an alliance. All right, let's go to number two. Choose wisely. The season's social experiment provided us with a great reminder about the importance of choosing wisely. Two of the nicest women you'll ever meet quickly formed an alliance with an individual that appeared to be a good match, although they barely knew him. It turned out he was a loose cannon. By sheer association, they were the first two removed from the experiment. As with most loose cannons, he stayed in the game far too long. Sound familiar? Consider these two potential alliance scenarios. A, this is a person who you click with right off the bat. He or she is friendly and nice, and you seem to have a lot in common. You aren't sure who this someone might be connected to or why that would even be important. You appreciate someone kind enough to reach out to you. Or B, this is a person who you don't click with right off the bat. He or she is not necessarily friendly or nice and doesn't have a lot in common with you. However, this individual is well-respected within the organization. Dare I even say this person is well-connected? I vote for the second option, and it isn't even close. I can practically hear the uproar, Rob, you're a sellout. Rob, you're telling me to befriend and form alliances with someone I don't necessarily like? Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying, and no. I'm not a sellout. If I was still in my 20s, I'd tell you about my friendships, my principles, and never compromising on either. But you know, Oscar Wilde once wrote, experience is a name everyone gives to their mistakes. Well, I have my share of experiences in this area, and I'm telling you, the wrong alliance is dangerous. And choosing an alliance based solely on friendship and or shared likes and dislikes is both an instinct and a mistake. It's not a 
question of compromising on your values. It's the reality of understanding the ramifications to the kind of people you choose to align with. Back to our social experiment. Guess what happens to good people who align with individuals who struggle within the tribe? I mean, the corporation. Predictably, they scramble to convince everyone that they never really shared the views of the individual, and they are now aligned with everyone else. And they're often the next to go. All right, number three, remain loyal to your alliance. The only thing worse than someone who picks the wrong alliance is someone who flip-flops from one alliance to the next. It's apparent to everyone, and that kind of behavior will leave you with the title, not trustworthy. Is there a worse professional title to be labeled? Do I really need to take you back to our social experiment and tell you what happens to those who are not loyal? It isn't an immediate exit, but it's a guarantee of failure. That's because once someone is labeled as not trustworthy, it's nearly impossible to change it. Once trust is broken, it cannot be repaired. So there's two ways to view this podcast. The first would be to miss the message and walk away thinking, Rob told me the only way to succeed is for me to suck up to someone I don't necessarily like. But the other view is to walk away and remember that the professional relationships you build matter a lot. They matter to you and they matter to those around you. Understanding this, choosing your alliances wisely and remaining loyal to the choices you make will help you succeed in the social experiment I call working with others. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please rate and recommend it on iTunes, Outcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get more information on this show and Rob at Jollis.com.